campers off today, we have two campers, Jan and Larry, who claim to have been attacked by Bigfoot while out camping. Like James, maybe one day. The pair had encountered another group of campers, some of which had claimed to have seen Bigfoot in the area on previous occasions, including the night before. Around midnight, all the campers went back to their respective tents. Jan and Larry had just zipped up their own tent when they began hearing footsteps coming from the bushes. Before Larry had the chance to check out where the noise was coming from, the sides of his tent began to shake. The Bigfoot was attacking them, aggressively clawing, scratching, pushing, and pulling at the tent. Eventually it moved on, but Jan and Larry will never forget that day. The pair claimed that there are seven separate Bigfoots living in the area, and they've actually seen and heard the creature on separate occasions too. And they were able to capture photos of the Sasquatch's tracks. The name of the campsite was not disclosed, but the incident happened somewhere in Wisconsin, so do with that information what you will. This next case comes out of Colorado. So back in 2015, a couple were driving on a desolate road late at night when they felt something bump into their car. They backed up a bit to see what they'd hit, praying that it wasn't a person, but they never expected to see what they saw. They spotted a dark shape on the road, looking like it could have been a bear. They pulled out a phone and started filming their rear view camera, and this is what they captured. Now, whatever this thing is, it's only on camera briefly, but pausing and taking a look at the thing fully upright, rushing towards the car, it looks pretty big. It's hard to get a sense of how big it is because it's, it's pretty far away, but it looks to be taking up quite a big part of that one lane, and it looks fairly tall. What do you guys think, though? Sasquatch, dude in a costume, a bear that's maybe learned to move like a human? Let us know down in the comments. Next up, we have Teddy Roosevelt's retelling of a Bigfoot encounter as told to him by a German hunter named Bauman. The hunter Bauman, along with his friend, had gone out into the remote section of the Montana wilderness with one goal, to trap beavers. The men were likely the only hunters in the woods at the time because, as a general rule of thumb, hunters tended to avoid the area after a fellow trapper had been found mauled in the woods a few months prior. Bauman and his friends did not care. They set up camp and went out to lay their traps, but when they returned to their campsite, it was ransacked. Thinking the mess had been left by a bear, the two didn't really think much of it. Bowman began cooking dinner, and his partner left to investigate some tracks they'd seen. They were massive, and it was clear the creature had been walking on two legs. When the pair eventually settled into their tents for the night, they were weary, and rightfully so. They were awakened by an awful smell and the sound of branches breaking around their tent. The following day, the men decided decided to leave the area. Bowman went to gather the beaver traps while his partner packed up the camp. But when Bowman returned to the campsite, he was greeted by a horrific scene. His friend's body was laid out across the ground with a broken neck and bite marks all over. Bowman knew his friend was dead and so he hightailed it out of there and uh, lived to tell the tale. Our next story comes to us from a deleted Reddit user who described their first-hand encounter with what they believe was a Sasquatch. The story goes as follows. So I was on this solo hike near a remote trail in the forest of Oregon. It was a beautiful day, sunny with a hint of a cool breeze, perfect for exploring nature. I've been on this trail before, but today something felt off from the get-go. About an hour into my hike, I started hearing these loud whooping sounds echoing through the trees. At first I brushed it off as some animal calls or maybe even other hikers goofing around, but the thing is, the sound was so intense, almost like they were coming from multiple directions at once. As I kept walking, the whoops turned into something more unsettling. They sounded closer, for one. Then I heard the snapping of branches coming from up the slope, like someone or something was trudging through the underbrush nearby. I stopped in my tracks, trying to listen more closely. That's when I saw rocks being hurled down from above. Luckily, I wasn't near or close enough for them to hit me. Now, my fight or flight was kicking in. I couldn't see anything through the thick foliage, but whatever was making those noises was definitely close. My heart was pounding in my chest. I turned around and booked it. I didn't catch a glimpse of whatever was out there, but I can tell you it was the most terrifying experience I've ever had while hiking. Next up, we have the Bigfoot attacks in the Valley of the Headless Man, which is actually in Canada. The attacks began in 1908. The bodies of two headless men appeared in the river of the valley. In 1945, another corpse was found headless again. And years later, a man was found in his sleeping bag, again with no head. While this might seem like the work of some senseless killer, it's important to note that natives in the area fled the land a few years prior to the first deaths and other native tribes have 
actively avoided the lands for centuries. Perhaps they knew something those poor men who lost their heads didn't. Many people who have visited the area reported finding large bipedal animal tracks, hearing loud roars and breaking branches, and smelling sulfur and rotten fish, despite being quite far off from the riverbeds. All telltale signs that Bigfoot is near. Next on the list is the Portlock Bigfoot Attacks. Portlock is an abandoned town in Alaska, and as for why it's abandoned, there are a few explanations, one of which has to do with reported attacks of giant hairy ape-like creatures. So in the 40s, the small community of Portlock, Alaska, had a string of unsettling incidents. Doll sheep hunters were disappearing, grisly discoveries of dismembered bodies were being found in the lagoon, and reports were coming in about encounters with an entity known locally as Nantanak. Bigfoot. There have been tales about Bigfoot, or Big Feet, as Hannah refers to them as, in Alaska for decades, and many still believe it's these creatures that caused the town to be abandoned. By 1949, the community of Portlock had dropped as residents left for neighboring villages. Residents have come out with tales of encountering enormous footprints, spotting a towering hairy figure lurking in the woods, and discovering mutilated bodies of those who ventured into the wilderness. Next up, we have an anonymous story that was shared with SasquatchChronicles.com by a UK woman who was visiting California on business when she stumbled upon something wild. Well, actually two something wilds, because believe it or not, while on a hike, the woman had walked right into the path of two massive Bigfoots. At first, she assumed that what she was looking at were some kind of mountain lions, but when the creature stood up on two feet, she realized that wasn't the case. These animals were easily over seven feet tall. They were working together to collect seaweed. They were like eating the roots and then rubbing the seaweed on their fur. I don't know. They were by the waterway where the woman had been hiking. The woman pulled out her camera to snap a few photos, but before she could, the cover on her camera lens fell and it made its way down to where the animals had been. The larger of the two was furious. He began charging at the woman and she thought for sure that these were her last moments, but the smaller of the two intervened. The two screeched at each other for a while, almost like they were speaking in some kind of gibberish language before they retreated back to the woods. The woman somehow made her way quickly back to her car. She really can't remember the walk there. She was so dazed, but she feels lucky to be alive. However, she regrets not getting that photograph. Next on the list, we have the Ape Canyon case. So this incident from 1924 is a tale from the Pacific Northwest of the United States that's become one of the most famous Sasquatch sightings in cryptozoology circles. According to the story, a group of miners claimed to have encountered a group of large, almost seven foot tall, hairy ape-like creatures in the vicinity of Mount St. Helens in Washington. The incident supposedly took place in Ape Canyon, which is what it's now called. A group of miners led by Fred Beck claimed to have been attacked by these mysterious creatures. Beck and his companions said that they had shot at the creatures in self-defense after being pelted with rocks, and later a bunch of these hairy creatures retaliated by attacking their cabin. The miners went outside the following day to find giant-sized footprints in the ground. Ground. Some believe the creatures described by Beck and his group were Sasquatch, or Bigfoot, or Big Feet, while others think it was all just a big, elaborate hoax. What is the plural of Bigfoot, you guys? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Next up, we have the attack of the folk monster. Um, that's not a swear word, that's the name of the monster. And don't come for me, but it's basically Arkansas's version of Bigfoot, or Arkansas, as James would say. <laughs> the folk monster, also known as the Boggy Creek Monster, or the Swamp Stalker, is a massive bipedal ape-like creature with massive feet and a foul smell. Sound familiar? Exactly. In the spring of 1971, two young couples moved into the town of Folk, Arkansas and rented a small house near a creek. It wasn't long before the couples noticed something wasn't right. They would often hear heavy footsteps coming from their front porch, and one night it seemed as though some kind of animal was attempting to gain access to their home. As the days went on, the pairs would often find massive three-toed footprints in the area around their house, and 
And then one evening, they saw the creatures, massive, shaggy, smelly, standing tall on two feet. The creature again attempted to gain entry to the couple's homes, but one of the men fired at the creature, causing it to turn on the other man, who was badly injured and required medical attention after the ordeal. The police got involved, but were unable to locate the massive animal. And this event actually marks the only medically documented attack by a cryptid on a human in North America. So it's legit, you guys. Next, we have more footage of a Bigfoot chasing a car, this time in Russia. Now, I say Bigfoot, there's a very good chance it's just a dude in a costume or just some crazy person chasing the car because it's that low quality of a video, like pretty much all Sasquatch videos are. So the footage was taken in 2016, and we see someone filming the side of a rural road with their phone camera. The people already sound frantic, like they've seen something before they started filming. Then you see this dark figure start ambling towards the car and they drive off. But then they decide to stop the car and try to see if they can get a good shot of the creature again. Take a look. In October 2023, a Bigfoot video filmed in Colorado went viral online. Sensen Parker and his wife Shannon recently took a trip through Colorado to celebrate their 10th anniversary. They boarded the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad and saw something unexpected. Bigfoot. Now the video, which was taken by a fellow passenger and posted online by Sensen, shows a tall, brownish creature walking and squatting before it blends into its surroundings. Now the footage is zoomed in, making for a grainy video. Now to him, Stenson said, the creature didn't look like a human, it didn't move like a person, he said. It looked more like an ape, but it didn't walk like an ape so much. He added that the creature's arms seemed too long to be human, with hands reaching down to its knees. It didn't look like anything I've ever seen before, he said. I don't think it was a hoax, and if it was, it was a really good one. Up next, we have the Mississippi Woods sighting. A video that has resurfaced and gone viral seemingly shows a Sasquatch moving through the Mississippi Woods. It was recorded and posted on YouTube back in 2015 by Josh Highcliffe. In the caption, Josh wrote, I was out hunting hogs and wearing hunting camo and just sitting dead still, waiting for it to get dark, and I hear a noise behind the tree I was sitting on. I thought it was the hogs, and when I got around, I could not believe my own eyes. He added there was this huge black thing crouched by a dead cypress about 50 yards away. I saw these shoulders and a head upright with hands. It looked like it was digging out a sump. My first instinct was to run. I did not even think of shooting. Then I know no one will believe me, but it was like everything slowed down. I was scared. I took my iPhone and started videotaping it. I heard a truck driving down the road and the thing stood up. I was trying to be dead quiet and when it stood up, I could not control my myself and ran. The stump was huge and I guess the sucker was seven feet tall. I am a hunter and I'm pretty darn good at guessing size. Wow, that is crazy. <laughs> now let's discuss the Owen Sound sighting. Ryan Willis and Joel Porter co-host a TV show called Sasquatch University where they've gotten credible sightings in Owen Sound. They started the Trent University Sasquatch Society, which zooms in scientists and others to talk to the Peterborough Club, hearing from all the top researchers in the Bigfoot community, said Willis, who is president. They've received reports, and quite credible ones too, which they thought would make a good episode for the show, he said. Now their hunt was to be conducted just four minutes west of Owen Sound, where the encounter happened, Willis said. One had a road crossing sighting, and it was like behind a sign at the other side of the road. It didn't actually cross the road, clarified Porter. Now the beast must have been 11 feet tall, given it was reported peaking over a 9 or 10 foot sign. Now a separate local sighting came from someone who viewed the big fellow through a window, Porter added. Now they weren't able to capture it on video, but they said they are determined to capture the proof. Moving on to the Provo Canyon sighting. There are many Bigfoot videos on YouTube, but one particular clip is from Provo Canyon, Utah. The video appears to show a large black animal hunched over in the trees, possibly feeding or foraging. Now the camera zooms in to try to get a closer look, and a few seconds later the great creature stands 
up on its two legs as if it's bipedal. Now, the video was posted on October 30th, 2012, and has amassed more than 7.6 million views on YouTube. Now, according to the account uploader, the pair were on a camping trip hoping to get a closer look at a deer on a hill. On our way up, we thought we saw a bear until the monster stood up and looked right at us. We ran straight to the car after that, leaving our tent and everything behind. It's probably all still up there. Now we have the Minnesota Bigfoot. In October of 2023, there was a Bigfoot sighting in Minnesota. The people who saw it said this. While my mother and I were grouse hunting up by Benna on Six Mile Lake Road in the Mud Goose Management Area, we both witnessed a Bigfoot. We were traveling and my mom said, whoa, back up. Down trail 2266 near the bend, we see a Bigfoot off the trail in the grassy ditch and it slowly moved off the trail west to east. My mom asked me if it felt like it moved in super slow motion. I concurred. The ditch at the site was three feet down and the grass at the side of the trail was three feet tall and the upper torso was three to four feet showing above the grass, leading the Bigfoot to be approximately eight to 10 feet tall. We drove to the spot and both noticed a strong sulfur or rotting vegetation. When I got out of the car, I immediately felt all the hair stand up on my body. I checked for any sign of footprints on the road and I could not see any due to the gravel being very packed down. There was a small bit of gravel disturbed in one spot near the west side of the road shoulder. We later got stopped by the conservation officer and when we mentioned what we had seen and where it was, he remarked that's where people have reported seeing a Bigfoot. My mother and I have no doubt that we saw one. Now let's talk about the Tennessee Bigfoot. In 2022, a man filmed what is believed to be Bigfoot in Tennessee. But it shows a huge black creature with super long arms moving about in a wooded area. Now as ever with these things, the footage isn't exactly the clearest, but there's definitely some weird creature hanging around there. According to Bigfoot Input, the man said he first thought it was a friend playing a prank, but once he saw the length of its arms and how it moved from tree to tree, he quickly grabbed his daughter and ran back inside. He said he got out one of his weapons and a dog and went back outside, but the creature had gone. Now the video has been shared on social media where it's gotten people baffled and questioning what it could be. One person said, what gets me is how it grabs one tree and then stretches the other arm to grab the other. I've heard of that before. Long arms and I noticed the broad shoulders that you'll see a Bigfoot having that a hunter in a suit does not have. Now everyone was convinced it was Bigfoot and I say, I have to agree. To start off, Florida Bigfoot is our next sighting. To start off the new year in 2017, a man claimed to have spotted Bigfoot. A fisherman claimed to have seen and photographed Bigfoot while it allegedly sat in a few feet of the murky, swampy Hillsborough River outside of Tampa, Florida. Then on January 25th, Matthew McCamey and his friend claimed to have seen Bigfoot while canoeing in a swamp that day in Lettuce Lake Park near Tampa, Florida. Now perhaps they saw the same Bigfoot who was just roaming the area. Now the two men took a canoe into one of the many swampy inlets of Lettuce Lake Park, and around 1 p.m. they heard a noise accompanied by tree movement. Matthew grabbed his phone and started videotaping. Initially, it was exciting, and it was like, oh, is that a bear? That's pretty cool, he said. When we moved up closer, it started to look less and less like a bear. You could tell he was slapping the water, and it looked like maybe he was grabbing something. At the time, I was just thinking, holy sh, what the hell is this? He said that his friend was so shaken by the experience that he still won't talk about it. Now at one point in the video, the friend moved one of the canoe paddles, making a noise, which seemed to catch the attention of the hairy individual in the swamp. Matthew added, where the video cut off is basically where I stopped taping. We wanted to leave and I couldn't do both video and row. Moving on to the California Bigfoot. In 2001, a youth group was camping in the Marble Mountain Wilderness, California, when their leader, Jim Mills, noticed a strange looking creature sulking along a ridge nearby. He believed it was Bigfoot and filmed it for nearly seven minutes, making the somewhat grainy footage the longest footage of an alleged Bigfoot sighting. The video shows Bigfoot walking down a hill, and some think this video is legit and is one of the longest known Bigfoot videos ever captured before. The video has been considered legitimate and has not been tampered with. What makes this video interesting is there were multiple witnesses, but everyone in the video is shockingly calm though, which is just like, 
crazy to me. Now it's unknown if this youth group returned back to this location, or if anyone else was brought in to investigate there, and officially, if evidence was documented, it might have been quietly swept under the rug. Next up, we have the Canada sighting. In 2022, a video shared on the YouTube channel of the Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization, RSMO, shows what they claim is yet another in a long line of Bigfoot sightings. This particular footage, taken by boaters in northern Ontario, Canada, doesn't come with a lot of details. There's been a lot of Bigfoot activity in Ontario, Canada recently, and there's also a long history of Bigfoot sightings in this wild remote area recently, the person from RMSO says in the video. We have seen a lot of photos and videos of Bigfoot in the area, and here is one of the latest Bigfoot sightings captured by some boaters. Now, the commenters truly believe that the evidence is real. The ease of walking up the rocky pile and subsequent gate afterwards is not how a human walks. Very compelling, one viewer wrote. Wow, he is huge, looks to be 8 or 10 feet tall. Scary just watching this, commented another. And last on our list, we have the traffic cam Bigfoot. A Washington Department of Transportation traffic camera near Sherman Pass captured Bigfoot standing in the snow in January 2020. Sasquatch spotted, the WSDOT e Twitter account tweeted, along with three circled and zoomed in photos. I'm not superstitious, just a little stitious. The WSDOT employee points out that there appears to be something in the bottom left part of the frame. It looks like a person shaped figure silhouetted against an evergreen tree. Might be Sasquatch, the tweet says. We will leave that up to you. Now one image shows the figure circled in red, and the tweet also says that the photos were captured on State Road 20 Sherman Pass, a route that winds its way through the forested Cascade Mountains in the northeastern part of the state. The spot is about 70 kilometers south of the Canada-US border in Grand Forks, BC. Now I'm sure Bigfoot didn't realize that there was a traffic cam there, and hopefully he's more careful. And we're starting off the list with the Alabama sighting. So I tried to throw in some recent sightings for this list, because we've all seen the famous Patterson footage. It's cool, but uh, good to change things up a bit. So, this one was reported by an elderly couple in Claiborne County, Alabama, and was posted on the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization website. The witnesses stated, My husband and I heard strange sounds for two nights in February of 2023, and laughed about how they sounded like the Bigfoot sounds on television shows. The third night at dusk, we were in our carport looking into the woods that border our property in Helfin, Claiborne County, Alabama. We saw what looked like Bigfoot peeking around a tree at us. We watched it for approximately five minutes as it appeared to look at us from the left and then right of the tree trunk. I dismissed it as being a distortion within the trees and wind, turned to go into the house and looked back and distinctly saw what could only be Bigfoot running away. I yelled for my husband and he also saw it running away. It had our hearts beating wildly and the hair standing up on our arms. There was no mistaking what we saw. At our number nine spot, we have our first piece of Squatch footage for you. In this clip, you can clearly see a very large hairy creature strolling through a wooded area. Now. What I like about this one is the shape of the creature. If this is someone in a costume, it's a it's a pretty good one. It doesn't have the proportions of a human. It's very gorilla-like. This is a thick squash too, packing some some gains in the tushy area. But also the back is massive and it has its head is like hunched in front. With so many supposedly real Bigfoot sightings videos, like the, the quote unquote Bigfoot, rarely looks like it's carrying the weight of a massive sized hominid. Usually Bigfoot videos just look very uh, blurry to make sense of anything too, or when you do see the creature, it just lacks the bulk that's often reported in first-hand Bigfoot accounts. Just like a person in a cheap gorilla suit, but this one doesn't look human. The solid video, even if it is a hoax. At number eight, we have the Minerva monster case. In 1978, in Minerva, Ohio, the Caton family reported encountering a large Bigfoot-like creature near their home. Their account included rocks thrown at their house and the discovery of enormous footprints in their backyard. Their dog was also uh, mysteriously died 
just mauled. This was not an isolated incident though. Several neighbors and other residents in the area also claimed sightings of a similar hairy creature around that same time. And this series of encounters became widely known as the Minerva Monster Case, drawing significant media attention. Jim Shannon, a former Stark County Sheriff who had responded to one of the Caton family's distress calls, expressed his belief in their reports, stating that they were terrified. I will always believe them that they saw something. It's just, what did they see? At number seven, we have another recent sighting, also posted to the BFRO, this time in Wisconsin. The sighting happened on May 28th, 2023. A woman had been driving down a road in the early morning in Oconto County when she spotted the creature. This area in northern Oconto County, Wisconsin, is mostly wooded with swamp near the Oconto River. As I near the corner, I saw a black and brown large figure of a man that I thought may have been someone that broke down on the trail as it was walking south towards Peshtigo Brook Road. I stopped at the corner as I could not believe what I was looking at, trying to wrap my head around it and convince myself it was a man as it was walking on two legs and had taken from what I saw about 10 steps toward me. However, there was no sound, no yelling for help or waving the arms and no human colored skin. It was in fact a dark black and brown figure with large legs and even at the base towards the feet. It was hairy, it was not a bear though, and it was not a human. I looked around the corner and could see in the distance down North Branch Road that a human was walking east towards me in that direction. I then looked back and the large, black brown figure went into the ditch and disappeared. I was convinced it had to be a Sasquatch. Number six, help. I think I saw a skunk ape. This video was posted to YouTube by Josh Highcliffe and is probably one of the most convincing Bigfoot, uh, or in this case, technically skunk ape pieces of footage in recent years. The video was taken about nine miles west of Tunica, Mississippi at around 6 p.m. in October of 2013. Josh had been hunting for hogs when he spotted the creature. He'd been sitting on a log waiting for the sun to go down when he heard strange noises coming from behind him. And when he turned around, he spotted this large, dark, furry creature digging out the stump of a dead tree. Now, I gotta say, I try to be skeptical when it comes to things like this, cryptids, ghosts, whatever. But this video is pretty convincing. That looks like an animal messing around in the forest to me. Creepiest part is when the thing stands up and you see that it's way taller than you thought. And it was at this point that our cameraman was convinced that this was not a bear and decided to get the hell out of there. Number five, Backyard Bigfoot. The following is a story shared to Reddit by user Bigfoot Watcher. Post is from nine years back and they wrote the following. Two nights ago, my boyfriend went out to take the dogs out back. My one dog started barking like crazy right away. My boyfriend had a flashlight and quickly scanned the grass line where the woods start, where we normally see deer, our houses bordered by woods. Something made him shine a bit higher and he sees two eyes staring back at him, about nine feet off the ground. As my boyfriend tries to hurry the dogs back inside, he sees the thing turn and casually walk back into the woods like a man with arms and shoulders. I've never seen my boyfriend so freaked out. He came inside and closed every single window and all the blinds and refuses to let the dogs out in the backyard at night anymore. In hindsight, there have been a few instances in the past few weeks that we can't explain, like dogs' toys being uh, down by the woods with bites taken out, but it was the placement of the toys and whatnot that makes us wonder. Also a grunt snort noise we heard recently. My boyfriend cannot get over the size of this thing and the fact that the eyes were so high off the ground. I asked him if he thought he saw a Bigfoot and he said after a minute or so of silence, if I wasn't a believer before, I sure as hell am one now. Next on the list, we have the nighttime Bigfoot. I'm not 100% sold on this next clip, but it is pretty harrowing at the same time. Check this out. So you have people filming in the woods in the middle of the night. They've obviously heard something because they're scanning the woods with their, their camera, trying to spot whatever it is. And then this pops up, a big, 
hairy Sasquatch creature with a really creepy looking face. Uh, one little touch I like about this video is that you actually see it blink. It definitely makes it more convincing. I feel like if I saw this, I wouldn't be sticking around though. After the creature trudges back into the trees, they just kind of stand there breathing heavily. But I don't know, maybe they were shocked, frozen in fear. Anyway, what do you think of this one? Let me know in the comments. At number three, we have another account posted to the BFRO. This one happened in September of 2018 in Whitmore, California. The man described his experience as follows. I was driving up to work from Reading. I worked at a school in Whitmore, California in Shasta County. That was only accessible from a logging road. As I was going up the mountain, I rounded a corner in about 300 feet from me and maybe 400 feet from Tintago Lane, a tall, hairy creature, dark brown, with some gray along the back shoulders, walking on two legs across the road, which is wide enough for two cars to pass each other in about two steps and then was in the woods. The hair on the back of my neck instantly stood up and I was terrified. I had my 11 month old son in the back seat and I drove to campus as quickly as I could. There were major wildfires in the area at this time. Maybe it was trying to get away from the fires or incredibly unhealthy smoke. Several of my coworkers on that campus have had experiences as well. All right, this next video was uploaded to the YouTube channel Beard Card in 2012 and has since received millions of views. A group of friends had gone camping in Provo Canyon. They'd seen some deer on a hill and went to get a closer look. There, they spotted what they thought was a bear. You can hear them whispering to each other in the video. I mean, like seeing a bear, that would obviously be pretty nerve wracking as is. But then the thing stands up and once again, comes very clear that what they are looking at is not a bear. The thing is very wide. It doesn't look like it has the proportions of a human at all, at least not a regular sized one. It really, I don't know, just the idea of seeing something in the woods, you don't know what it is. This video really gets that across. And the reactions just seem genuine, like, oh, like they just were, they thought it was a bear the entire time. And then it stands up and they're like, okay, go. <laughs> Anyway, coming in at number one, we have the Harley Hoffman footage. I remember seeing this clip years ago. It was edited into an interview with Harley Hoffman, a Bigfoot uh, explorer, researcher, enthusiast, I guess. I couldn't uh, find the footage again until recently. This is footage that he captured. It's a pretty solid piece of footage too. You get a good glimpse of the creature. It doesn't look like just some guy in a cheap gorilla costume either. There actually looks like some musculature underneath the fur, much like the famous Patterson footage, which is, is why that footage is so famous. It doesn't look like just a uh, guy in a suit. Now, uh, there is some shaky cam going on here, but I, I have a hard time imagining if you actually came across a giant ape in the middle of the forest that you'd be calm enough to do some nice smooth Stanley Kubrick level of camera work. So that doesn't bother me too much. And we're kicking off this list with a, a very recent Ohio Bigfoot report. This one is detailed on the BFRO or the Bigfoot Field Researchers website where there are tons of different eyewitness reports of the elusive beast. But this is a good one to start off with because it just happened back in January of this year. On January 22nd, on a snowy afternoon in Warren County, Ohio, a family reported seeing a big creature standing near a bike path while they were driving down the road. The father of the family wrote, as we were driving along State Route 350 towards State Route 123, south of Oregonia, we came to the Loveland Bike Trail that runs next to the Little Miami River. As I slowed down near the bike path crossing, we looked out the passenger side of the car and saw a large black figure standing a distance up the bike path facing the river while it was snowing. The ground was covered with at least three inches of snow, so it didn't appear that someone would be on the bike path biking or walking the trail. The weather was not ideal for anyone to be hunting or walking on the path at the time. The figure appeared to have come from the woods and was walking towards the river. He also described the figure as having no obvious clothing pattern, being consistently dark 
darkened that his wife and two teenage children also spotted it. There have apparently been at least nine credible sightings of a supposed Bigfoot like creature in the same area, too. Number nine, Bigfoot howls. In this video uploaded by We Do It Outdoors, we see our cameraman roaming through a forest in Lore City, Ohio. The sun is starting to set, and we hear a series of strange eerie howls and tree knocks. We Do It Outdoors seems to have started as a channel about maintaining lawns, but uh, over the last few years, there have been a number of Bigfoot related videos uploaded on there. One of which I may or may not be discussing later in the list. And whether they're real or not, some of them are pretty entertaining. We get some genuinely creepy sounds in this video. It definitely sounds like something or someone is howling in the distance. If I heard sounds like this while I was in the forest, I'd, I'd just turn right around immediately. This guy sticks around until it's like fully dark and the sounds just get louder and louder. Real or not, it's definitely a creepy video. Number eight, the Jefferson County Report. Next up, I have another report detailed on the Bigfoot Field Researchers website. This incident was reported in July of 2021, still pretty recent, in Jefferson County, Ohio. A man describes finding a large footprint in his chicken coop, as well as all of his chickens having gone missing. He's quoted saying, on July 9th at approximately 10 a.m., I noticed my five chickens were missing. The chicken coop was full of feathers, but no bodies or blood. I did a perimeter check and came across an extremely large footprint. I went back to the house and brought down a tape measure to the footprint and measured it and took pictures with the tape measure beside it. The footprint measured a length that was apparently 18 inches with a width of about 9 to 10 inches. A, a Bigfoot investigator named Jim Thompson came to investigate the man's property and discovered more footprints that were about 4 feet apart from one another. That's about double the gait of an average person, by the way. On July 24th, a couple weeks after making his initial report, the man described hearing strange strange yelps coming from either end of his property as if they were yelping back and forth to each other. And he also said that on some nights he gets an eerie feeling that something is watching him. I have that almost every night too. At number seven, we have Susan Ferenczak. Suzanne Ferenczak is a former skeptic turned Bigfoot enthusiast. After spotting a strange hairy creature near her home in Loudonville, Ohio, she had first spotted what she described as a big black furred creature jump over the road. Not sure where said road was exactly or what type of road it was. If it was a highway road, that would be nuts. If it was just a small dirt road, still scary, not quite as impressive though. Suzanne has recorded audio of what she believes to be a Sasquatch while out in the wilderness near her home and has shared the two minute clip online. I give it a listen. The quality, not great, but it's, uh, it's definitely eerie. You hear this distant howling. It definitely doesn't sound like a wolf. You also get some classic, you know, whoops in there too, which a lot of Bigfoot researchers describe Sasquatches, you know, making. Whether it's a genuine uh, Bigfoot or not, I really just dig supposed Bigfoot audio. I, I just imagine being out alone in the woods at night and hearing some distant wail and whooping and human or not. I mean, it would it'd be pretty bone chilling. All right, now I'm gonna share the last report from the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, at least for this video anyway. There are tons on the site. This one was reported in Mahoning County, Ohio in July of 2021. Sorry if I'm messing up the pronunciation there. A man had described seeing a strange creature one evening after returning home with his wife and is quoted as saying, tonight, yet another sighting by our pond. My wife and I were at dinner and as we arrived home about eight 30 p.m. A large, fast, gray and silver, light brown, covered in fur, Bigfoot darted from the bushes in our front into the cattails in our pond on all fours. We both looked at each other and said, did you just see that? The subject was down low and bent in the middle as, as it moved. Unlike a dog, its undulating movement was not as fluid as a dog. It was not a bear. It appeared to be from four to five feet at the back and torso built like a barrel. When it went into the cattails, we were no longer able to see it. Number five, the 1992 Grassman sighting. Grassman uh, is again the name often given to the big ape-like creature or creatures 
critters that so many Ohio locals have spotted. And in this video, taken in eastern Ohio in 1992 by a man named Don Keating, he had spotted what looked like a large hairy creature walking into the forest. He managed to capture it on camera, and though the footage is very grainy and he, it was a fair distance away from it, there is definitely something, something walking into the forest. It's, it's not the most convincing video evidence. It's hard to tell what you're looking at, but I do always find uh, something eerie about old 90s VHS footage, and Keating seems to believe he saw some kind of large cryptid, so. This video was featured on Monster Quest and features an interview with Keating describing what he saw and that he was a skeptic before this encounter. I always like it when they say there were skeptics before, because, you know, it's just, it's a bit more convincing that way. At number four, we have the famous Minerva Monster Case. Back in 1970, a family living in Minerva, Ohio reported what they believed to be a large Bigfoot-esque cryptid around their home. The Caton family reported rocks being thrown at their home by the creature and would spot large footprints in their backyard. But there are other reports of a mysterious creature in the area around the same time. The Caton's neighbor also spotted the big hairy creature, as well as other residents of the area. The case became known as the Minerva Monster Case and gained rather significant media attention at the time. A former Stark County Sheriff named Jim Shannon, who had responded to one of the Caton family's uh, reports, is quoted as saying, They were terrified. I will always believe them. They saw something. It's just... what." did they see? This case has become the subject of a 2015 documentary called Minerva Monster, directed by Seth Breedlove, who we might be talking about in a bit. Next up, we have Mark DeWorth. Mark DeWorth is a Ohio Bigfoot investigator who has collected a fair amount of evidence in the 30 years he's spent on the hunt. He's got footprints, audio recordings, and of course, his first-hand encounter, which was the catalyst for his research. The story is he'd been exploring an old strip mine and search of badger dens, he was followed out by something which soon stood up and looked at him, a big, bipedal, hairy creature. If that happened to me, I would not go looking for the creature again. I would move out of Ohio the next morning, probably. The thought of an eight-foot tall, hairy beast roaming through the woods has always been kind of creepy to me, but having one stare at you in a cave? Imagine looking through a cave thinking all you're gonna see that day is maybe some badgers, and then you're met with an eight-foot tall, hairy ape man glaring at you. Only I'm allowed to find badgers in this cave. Whether the story is true or not, definitely a terrifying image. A video shared by Spectrum News shows Mark talking to several residents of Warren County, Ohio about his experience with this elusive creature, as well as hearing some of their first-hand accounts. He plays an audio recording, which sounds, again, pretty creepy. I love me some Bigfoot audio recordings. Anyway, Mark DeWorth has been interviewed on tons of podcasts discussing his Sasquatch experiences. So uh, seek those out if you're interested. And at number two, we have the Seth Breedlove Encounter. Seth Breedlove is a filmmaker who's gone on to shoot a series called The Bigfoot Project, which you can find on a YouTube channel called Small Town Monsters. Before he had his first encounter, Seth described himself as a skeptic. In a YouTube video uploaded by Ed Ballant, Seth recounts the time he first encountered what he believes to be Bigfoot. Seth had been riding down the countryside of Minerva, Ohio when he spotted what looked to be a large bipedal creature with brown hair running through a clearing on a hill about 50 yards away. And it was fast, clearing the space in less than a second. One of the things that really stuck out to Seth most was the creature's very noticeable musculature, especially in the bicep area. Listening to uh, Seth talk, he doesn't sound like he genuinely believes what he saw. He doesn't seem like he's making anything up on the spot or anything. Thing. Whether it was indeed the missing link or something more benign, he definitely did see something. And coming in at our number one spot is the Salt Fork footage. This video, once again, uploaded by the YouTube channel, We Do It Outdoors, is only 10 minutes long, but there's there's a lot going on with this one. Uh, so two men were exploring Salt Fork State Park in eastern Ohio, and after hearing some strange noises, they happened to capture footage of what looks to be a large bipedal hairy animal. We have a few different pieces of evidence in this video. We have handheld footage of the creature moving through the trees. We have some drone footage, lots of sounds too. It's a very meaty video. Now, could it be 
a big guy in a suit. Look, it can always be a big guy in a suit, but I gotta say, if it is a suit, it's not a bad one, it's pretty good. It, it looks like it has some bulk to it. It doesn't look like just one of those generic gorilla suits you can pick up at Spirit Halloween. And what I like here is that the footage is clear. He's not relying on shaking the camera around or making the video extra grainy to try and obscure the image. And just for those reasons alone, I like this video, even if it isn't real. We also hear some vocalizations going on here. So like I said, it's just a lot happening. Check this one out over at We Do It Outdoors. Number 10, joking about Bigfoot. In February of this year, a woman and her husband heard strange sounds for two nights and laughed about how they sounded like the Bigfoot sounds on television shows. That was their first mistake. Then on the third night at dusk, they looked into the woods that bordered their property in Heflin, Alabama, and this is what happened. We saw what looked like Bigfoot peeking around a tree at us. We watched it for approximately five minutes as it appeared to look at us from the left and the right of the tree trunk. I dismissed it as being a distortion with the trees and wind. I turned to go into the house and looked back and distinctly saw what could have been only Bigfoot running away. I yelled for my husband and he also saw it running away. There was no mistaking what we saw. Both the husband and wife said the figure must have stood approximately eight feet tall and its fur was very dark. Was Bigfoot spying on them? Who knows? Number 9 side of a mountain. In December 2022, TikTok user Sasquatch Project, who claims to be connecting the cryptid community, posted a video of what appears to be Bigfoot. The text on the video reads, real giant caught on video in Mexico. The video shows what appears to be some sort of mountain or cave. There's a hole in the side of it and there's a large man looking out. He seems to be staring at the person recording and then backs up and goes back into the rocks. Many people in the comments made jokes, but a lot of them think Think it's real. One user commented, what's going to be the government's excuse for this one? The video and the zoom is on point. Others are commenting that it's like the film The Hills Have Eyes, that it's a giant or Bigfoot, but who knows? Number 8. Bigfoot Hiking In 2001, a youth group was camping in the Marble Mountain Wilderness, California, when their leader, Jim Mills, noted a strange looking creature sulking along a ridge nearby. He believed it was Bigfoot and filmed it for nearly 7 minutes, making the somewhat grainy footage the longest video of an alleged Bigfoot sighting. The video shows Bigfoot walking down a hill. The creature is huge, it's dark in color, and is walking on two feet, but has somewhat of a strange stride. It's definitely not human, and no animal could appear like that, so the obvious answer is it's Bigfoot. But everyone in the video is shockingly calm though, which is crazy to me. Number 7. The Footprint In 1980, locals in Johnstown, Pennsylvania were baffled by a footprint they found. They first discovered the massive print in the mud and it belonged to somebody or something's right foot. Additionally, it had six toes rather than five, and the second imprint of the left foot was found eight feet away from the right print. It was so big and they measured it, finding it was 17 17.75 inches long. Now, this didn't spook too many people though, because according to the Associated Press, the footprint coincided with reports of strange noises and a strong but unusual odor in the area. Again, I love how everyone was just so chill about this. Number 6. Bigfoot Crossing the Road This story is from a man in Canada. He said, I was going moose hunting and my friend was driving and we had been on the road about 9-10 to 10 hours going to Ignis, Ontario, and we were on the Trans Canada Highway. This area has the bush cut back some 30 to 40 years on each side of the road when I noticed an animal coming out of the north side of a ditch area and run across a two lane highway. This animal ran across the road on two legs and was about 20 yards away. By the time it crossed the road, my friend turned to me and said, What the hell was that? I said, Don't you know that was a Sasquatch slash a Bigfoot? It was about six to seven feet tall. It had very long and muscular arms that went down to its knees. It was covered in fur that reminded me of moose hair. It looked like it was as tall or a little bit taller than the cab of the truck. It only took about five or six steps across the two lane highway and down to the ditch we were passing. I think it's a female because of breasts that were in the lower chest area, heavy legs and buttocks, about 300 to 400 pounds. It had less hair on the chest area and a partially covered homed face that I could see muscle definition on the arms and shoulders. Number 5. Tracks in 
BC. This story comes from a group of people from British Columbia in December 2022. We were returning home last night and two members in our vehicle said, look, is that a bear? The person in the front seat saw what looked like a huge man standing on two legs. It bent over and fell to four legs. The person in the back saw the animal on the four legs. They both said it was not a bear. We live nearby so when we got home, all four of us decided to go back and look for tracks. We went and filmed and took photos of a whole bunch of massive tracks that looked like they were from a biped animal. The tracks were bipedal in pattern and in a fairly straight line, except at points where they were side by side as if the creature was stopping and standing still. We have also been walking in the woods near our house and one time I saw a structure slash setup of trees that looked deliberately placed in different crisscross arrangements. I also heard deep resonant sounds one night. It sounded part human, part animal. The Ohio howl matched exactly what she heard right outside her cabin, only a few hundred feet from where the sighting was. Number four. Family Witness. In 1996, this family saw Bigfoot. This user says, My two daughters and I were driving into Yakima from our home in Natchez. The road runs along the Natchez River, and I look down at the river, as I always do, to see deer or bald eagles. But this time, I saw a large dark figure at the edge of the water behind some bushes. Slamming on my brakes and backing up far enough to see the river again, the large figure was gone and nowhere to be seen. Of course, my kids said, Sure, mom. Mom. Bigfoot, I don't think so. About two weeks later, I was driving on the same road coming home, and about half a mile from where I thought I had seen the other one, there were two standing side by side just looking down at the water. One was about a foot and a half taller than the other, both dark in color with very wide shoulders. Then about a week later, my husband was coming home. When he got home, he asked me where I thought I had seen the two Bigfoot. I told him and he said that he had just seen something like I saw in the same area. He's a real skeptic, so for him to say he saw something, he must have. I look every day, and so far I have not seen my friends down by the water, but I won't give up looking. Number three, Creature Week sighting. I was a vendor at Creature Week at Salt Fork State Park on May 4th in 2013. At 9:45 p.m., a fisherman that was in a tournament came all shook up and said, At first I thought you were a bunch of nuts until now. He said he saw Bigfoot. This caught our attention, and the five of us decided to go out the next morning at 6 a.m to check out the site. So I got there at 5 a.m. and waited, so I said I'll start without them and maybe they'll catch up with me. I started to head down the sagebrush trail and headed to where the fishermen saw them. I kept walking and when I hit the first turn of the shadebrush trail, I heard something like talking on the ridge on my left. At first I thought it was friend A and friend B with friend A's black shirts on. So I hit a tree and yelled, hey guys, wait up. Then they started to walk faster and I yelled, very funny guys, and this is when I got a great look at them. It it was two Bigfoots and they were black and huge. I tried to catch up with them, but once they got to the bottom of the ridge, they took off into the brush. I tried to follow them, but once they got into the brush, I could not hear or see them. But I got a great look at them. They were black as coal and the hair length was as long as a bear and well groomed. At any time, they could have stopped and tore me in half, but all they wanted to do was get away as fast as possible. Number two, Bigfoot on a highway. This family has seen Bigfoot and the wife retold the story saying, in October 1997, I was returning home from work on the US Highway 241, just outside Gladstone, Michigan. I got off work at 5, picked up my kids, and my son was in the front seat with me, and my daughters were in the back. We had just left Gladstone city limits on a four lane highway when I noticed what I thought was a hunter crouched down on the opposite side of the median of the highway. As I approached, I said to my son, look at that stupid hunter, why is he just sitting there? But as we got closer to the man, or now I say creature, stood up. It was brown colored and it crossed the highway with a couple of steps as it was on the other side of the highway within seconds. As I passed, it put its arms down to its side and stepped into the woods and it was gone. I have seen bears, deer, wolves, coyotes, almost every living creature here. My mind raced after I saw this looking for the logical answer of what this could be and the only thing it could have been was a Bigfoot. Then two days later after I saw the creature, it was reported on the local radio station that a Bigfoot was spotted on 
on the same highway. And coming up at number one is the cottage Bigfoot. This dad saw Bigfoot when his family was away at their cottage. He said, we had been at the cottage for a few days when my sons and I heard a series of grunts, chirps, and squeals. It was fairly obvious that the sounds were coming from two areas about 15 degrees apart. There was also the noise of wood breaking and banging that was quite loud. We stepped out onto the deck to listen better. It was fairly obvious that one noise was getting closer to the other. The noises were really loud and it sounded like mayhem was breaking loose, trees being smacked and banging noises, shouts and whoops. Then it went quiet really quickly which was followed by a series of deep whooping noises and clicks which went on intermittently past the point I went to sleep. The next day I saw this big black brown thing sitting on a boulder about 20 feet above the water. I thought at first it was a bear but when a bear sits its legs just stick out in front slightly splayed. The thing had knees and it was sitting with its knees up near its chest. I was not sure of what I was seeing so I looked away and went back at it. I was not mistaken it had knees and was covered in hair with no neck and then slapped its hands on the rock about three times both hands at the same time. It looked kind of straggly and matted. It was huge on top like the chest area but it had scrawny by comparison legs. The hair on its legs were thinner and lighter. Then the thing just stood up and walked into the brush behind it. Seems like Bigfoot was just trying to enjoy the view of the lake to me. Starting off this countdown we have the infamous Bigfoot. This footage of Bigfoot is the one that started this whole Bigfoot craze. If you google images of Bigfoot this is surely the one to pop up. So back in 1967, two men were creating a short film in Northern California when they ended up capturing footage of Bigfoot. In the footage, we see him walk by a wooded area. Over the years, a number of people have attempted to debunk this footage, but none have been successful. Is it possible for it to be someone in a gorilla suit? Well, at the time this footage came out, the movie Beneath the Planet of the Apes also came out. If you look at the ape costumes used in that movie and compare it to the Bigfoot video, Bigfoot looks more realistic. People claim you can actually see the creature's muscles and such. How could someone make a costume way above its time? It's not possible. Meaning this could be evidence of a real Bigfoot. Coming in at number 9 we have Provo Canyon Bigfoot. In October of 2012 a group of siblings were hiking in Provo Canyon when they spotted something in the woods and began filming it. Earlier on their hike they saw some deer and wanted to get a closer look at them so they headed up in the direction of the deer. That's when they spotted this creature. At first they thought it was a bear but were horrified when the creature stood up on its two legs. They got frightened and ran out of the area. To this day, they don't know exactly what it is that they saw, but they managed to capture it on tape. Yeah, we probably should be too close to it. Huh? How cool that is. Cool. Moving on at number eight, we have Algany National Forest. In 2007, hunter Rick Jacobs decided to mount a wildlife camera to a tree in Algany National Forest, Pennsylvania. The camera worked on a motion sensor and would take photos when triggered. He had hopes of capturing photos of bears, deers, and other wildlife. Little did he know that he was about to capture evidence of Bigfoot. So on September 16th, 2007, upon reviewing the photos on the camera, he discovered a creepy picture of what appears to be Bigfoot. However, skeptics believe that it's an image of a sick bear. But the way that it's hunched over with its back leg extended makes it look like Bigfoot. In our seventh spot, we have Marble Mountain Bigfoot. If you are a Bigfoot enthusiast, then this is another well known sighting to you. In June of 2001, a group of teens and a leader, part of a youth group called Campus Life, were camping at Marble Mountain. The group ended up finding a weird den made out of twigs and large branches. Then, shortly after, the leader, Jim Mills, noticed a weird looking creature moving nearby. He filmed it for seven minutes. To this day, this is the longest video footage of an alleged Bigfoot sighting. Experts have analyzed the footage and have agreed that it's not a human and that the creature is 9 feet tall. When the Bigfoot noticed the group of people watching it, it began jumping up and down, screaming, and then it pushes a tree. It was just probably trying to scare off the onlookers. 
Making our way down the list at number six, we have Lake James Bigfoot. Back in late 2019, a man named John Bruner and three other men went on a boat late at night scouting an area on Lake James. Apparently, that night, fishermen had seen something watching them from the shore. So these folks went out to investigate. That's when they started to hear weird noises coming from the cove. They turned off the boat's motor and used their night vision cameras to scope out the area. That's when they saw Bigfoot and got 121 pictures of it. The creature was estimated to be around seven and a half feet tall. At one point, they claimed that the creature was just standing, swaying back and forth while watching them. After five minutes, the creature walked away. But again, like all photos of Bigfoot, these photos are terribly blurry. All 121 of them. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with webcam Bigfoot. Bigfoot just keeps blowing its cover. Now it seems like he doesn't care if he gets caught. Also, let me say that Washington state is notorious for Bigfoot sightings. There have been tons of sightings over the years, so Bigfoot must have a home somewhere around there. Anyways, this time Bigfoot was caught on the Department of Transportation's webcam. The webcam was located on Sherman Pass on State Route 20. It caught Bigfoot crossing a mountain pass. Then you see it lurking behind some trees by the road. Whatever it is, it looks massive and hairy just like Bigfoot. In our fourth spot, we have the Russian Bigfoot. Bigfoot is said to mainly live in Canada and in areas of the US, but this video may prove that Russia is also home to Bigfoots. So this footage was shot back in 2016 and features Bigfoot chasing a car. In this video, you can see a black blob appear in the distance only to then start coming closer and closer to the car filming it. I mean, the creature moves pretty fast since it manages to catch up with the car, which keeps driving away from the creature and then stopping to get more footage of it. At one point in the video, the girls are yelling to close the window and can be heard saying, he's coming, he's running. Apparently, the creature actually jumped onto the car and broke the glass, but obviously they were not recording when that happened. Uh, so yeah. Apparently, Bigfoot in Russia are super aggressive. Also, is the plural of Bigfoot big feet or Bigfoots? I don't know. Big feet. <laughs> third spot, we have the Curious Children. In January of 2013, three Russian children were out playing in the snow when they stumbled upon Bigfoot. This case was actually featured on an episode of National Geographic. So the kids were out following a pair of footprints to the edge of a frozen lake. Along the way, they are laughing and joking around. That's when they see a tall, dark, hairy figure in the distance. When the creature spots them, it turns and runs away super fast. The kids get scared and run away as well. They describe to National Geographic that the creature was tall and covered in hair, except it had no hair on its face. The children and their parents all believe that they spotted a real life Bigfoot. Coming in at number two, we have the game camera, another Bigfoot sighting in Washington state. In attempts to catch a supposed Bigfoot that had been lurking around the area, they set up a game camera hidden in a fake rock. They did this as a way to trick Bigfoot. The camera and rock were set up in a man's yard, who claimed he saw Bigfoot lurking there nine months earlier. Well. They did capture something all right. If you look at the photo, it just kind of looks like a blurry mess, not gonna lie. But they believe that it shows an eye with wrinkles above it, part of a nose bridge, part of another eye, and a forehead. In fact, this image matches the eyewitness drawing of the creature. The photo from the game camera was placed on top of the drawing and it lined up almost perfectly. Pretty creepy if you ask me. And in our number one spot, we have 911 Bigfoot. This next sighting is so creepy. A man calls 911 saying that a tall, dark figure is in his yard. In fact, the full actual call is online available to be listened to. So the call occurred in Washington state. 
aka Bigfoot Central, back in 1996. The man on the phone tells the operator that someone or something is crawling in his yard. He says that his sensor light came on and he saw something run across the yard. When the operator asks him to describe it, he says that it's a good sized man or something that looks like a man. Then he says that the creature is about 6 foot 8 and is really big. He also tells her that the night before his dog was killed in his yard. Then out of nowhere he starts panicking telling the operator to send someone immediately. A week later, the sheriff's office got a picture of what seems to be Bigfoot lurking in his neighbor's yard. Number 10. Bigfoot has been around for hundreds of years. Now, some people think this is just a new phenomenon that has been made up, but there have been Bigfoot sightings and reportings for hundreds of years. It first started in Canada as early as 1884 when the British colonists, a newspaper in Victoria, Canada, published an account of a gorilla type creature captured in the area. Other accounts followed, according to the Canadian Encyclopedia. Sasquatch book author John Green compiled the list of 1,340 sightings through the 19th and 20th centuries. Now, the fact that this has been around for years and years makes me question people's doubts. Number 9. Face to Face with the Beast Lawyer Matt Moneymaker lives in Dana Point in Southern California, and in his spare time, he leads the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, which is a network of more than 3,000 people who claim to have seen the Sasquatch. In the woods of eastern Ohio, he claims he finally came eye to eye with it. He recounted this story saying, it was 2 o'clock in the morning and the moon was a quarter full. Suddenly, there he was, an 8 foot tall creature standing 15 feet away, growling at me. He wanted me to know that I was in the wrong place. Now, although he leads the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, no one from the organization has been able to snap a clear picture of the beast. Everyone there has their own experience with Bigfoot though. Number 8. Whitehall Trail In 1976, multiple witnesses, including local police and a New York State trooper, said they saw a man-like beast standing over 7 to 8 feet tall and covered with hair. A blurry photo was taken from a Whitehall Trail cam in 2010, and it is among hundreds of reported Bigfoot sightings across the state. Whitehall has its own Bigfoot event, the Sasquatch Calling Festival, with a competition for the best Bigfoot calls to attract the elusive animal. Bigfoot has reportedly been sighted in many other places, including Washington State in 2020, which kept the hope alive for the enthusiasts across the US. A Mayville, New York resident, Peter Weimer, told WGRZ that he's heard from 45 eyewitnesses who claim to have seen the Sasquatch in the area around Chetiqua Lake, located 60 miles south of Buffalo. There are a hundred or more witnesses in Chattaco County that aren't talking to me, Peter told the TV station. Now, according to WGRZ, the county is packed with dense forests and deep gorges where a large animal could live but rarely be seen, like the black bear. Peter, who sponsors the animal Chittaqua Lake Bigfoot Expo event for believers and fans, says footprints seen in nearby Asheville, New York are further evidence that Sasquatch is out there. Number 7. Vocalizations Alleged vocalizations such as howls, screams, moans, grunts, whistles, and even a form of supposed language have been reported and allegedly recorded from Bigfoot. Some of these alleged vocalization recordings have been analyzed by individuals such as retired US Navy cryptologic linguistic Scott Nelson. He analyzed audio recordings from the early 1970s said to be recorded in the Sierra Nevada mountains dubbed the Sierra Sounds. When speaking about his findings, he said, it's definitely a language, it's definitely not in human origin, and it could not have been faked. So yeah, they have their own language we choose to ignore. Number 6. Footprints Investigator Jimmy Chilcutt of the Conroe Police Department in Texas, who specializes in finger and footprints, has analyzed more than 150 casts of big footprints that Meldrum, the Idaho State professor, keeps in a laboratory. Jim says one footprint found in 1987 in Walla Walla in Washington State has convinced him that Bigfoot is real. He said, the ridge flow pattern and the texture 
posture was completely different from anything I've seen. It certainly wasn't human and of no known primate that I've examined. The print ridges flowed lengthwise along the foot, unlike human prints which flow across. The texture of the ridges was about twice the thickness of a human, which indicated that this animal has a real thick skin. Now, number five, Bigfoot like creature found. Showman Frank Hansen exhibited the Iceman, a Bigfoot like creature encased in ice, at the International Livestock Exposition in Chicago. This relic of the Ice Age was found in the waters off Siberia. In December 1968, Bernard Hillovmans of Royal Institute of Natural Sciences of Belgium examined the creature in a trailer in Minnesota. They said, We consider this to be a genuine and unique example of the most priceless specimen. In a scientific journal, Bernard declared that he discovered a new species of man. In April 1969, the Smithsonian appeared appealed to the FBI director J. Edgar Hoover for help. Hoover declined, citing the absence of a violation of a federal law within our investigation jurisdiction. It's reported that the US Customs would look into it, the body, after all it was supposedly imported. Meanwhile, Frank put a model of the specimen on display. Number 4. Bigfoot Video The most famous Bigfoot video is a short film taken in 1967 by Roger Patterson and Bob Gilman, known as the Patterson Film. Shot in Bluff Creek, the video shows what appears to be a large and hairy bipedal ape or Bigfoot striding through a clearing. The video's authenticity is still debated, with some thinking it was likely a hoax, with the ape-like figure just a human wearing a costume. Despite this, it is seen as one of the most compelling photographic evidence of Bigfoot. It appears to document a female Bigfoot striding along a riverbank in Northern California, and it certainly wasn't human. Number 3. Suing the Government Over Bigfoot Todd Standing claims his first close encounter with Bigfoot was in 2005, and that it dramatically changed his life. The filmmaker and wilderness guide from Edmonton says he saw a 9 foot tall bipedal creature with a very human like face high up in the Rocky Mountains of British Columbia. He says he saw it stand up and squat down. His video of the sighting, posted on YouTube, has more than 300,000 views, and he is suing the provincial government of BC in an effort to prove the existence of Bigfoot in court. He says that provincial wildlife officials are turning a blind eye to his findings. His lawsuit calls for a judge to declare that Sasquatch exists, and for a wildlife official to accompany him on a three month hunt for one of the creatures. He said, I've seen Sasquatch so many times, I mean over 50 times. I filmed them eight different times. He claims fish and wildlife officials officials are deliberately ignoring his findings, which do not include any actual specimens, living or dead. They won't look into the evidence, so that's why he must go to court to prove it. Number 2. A Bigfoot Study A Bigfoot study called the Sasquatch Genome Project was led by genetic scientists. It was a five year study and took almost $500,000 to fund. The group followed a mother and daughter Bigfoot in Kentucky and they claim there's thousands of them in the USA. The group captured videos and photos as evidence, but they also acquired DNA. The DNA has given them a theory that this creature is a hybrid of human. The DNA was sent to UT Southwestern, New York University, and North Louisiana Crime Lab. The results came back as human, but others did not. The scientists say whether you want to accept it or not, they have found proof that Sasquatch is a human relative that arose approximately 15,000 years ago as a hybrid cross of a modern Homo sapiens with an unknown primate species. The group called for this to be recognized officially, saying the government at all levels must recognize them as indigenous people and immediately protect their human and constitutional rights against those who would see in their physical and cultural differences a life since to hunt, trap, or kill them. And number one, the FBI got involved. An Oregon man, intent on proving the existence of a mythical creature known as Bigfoot, Sasquatch, the Abominable Snowman, and Yeti, in 1976 managed to get the FBI to test hair and tissue samples that he believed might help his case, according to newly released records. The FBI has analyzed hair in connection with the search for Sasquatch, aka Bigfoot, an internal FBI memo known in February 1977 said. The man who spurred the analysis, 93 year old Peter Bryan, told CNBC that he hasn't given up hope proving that Bigfoot is real, if exceedingly rare creature. FBI agent wrote back to Peter saying, we will examine the hairs and tissue mentioned in your letter. It was the first time that the FBI apparently tested a sample of hair to see if it was Bigfoot, according to the records, which contained photocopied images of the hairs. The FBI said the examination of the hair concluded a study of morphological 
characteristics such as root structure, maldurari structure, and cuticle thickness in addition to scale casts. Also, the hairs were compared directly with hairs of known origin under a comparison microscope. At the end of all that, it was concluded as a result of these examinations that the hairs are of deer family origin. The hair sample you submitted is being returned as enclosed in this letter it said. Was it really deer hair or were they covering up the fact that it actually was Bigfoot? The fact that they even tested the hair is insane. Number 10. The Logging Company In 1958, Jerry Crew, a logging company bulldozer operator in Humboldt County, California, discovered a set of large 16 inch human like footprints sunk deep within the mud in the Six Rivers National Forest. Upon informing his co workers, many claimed to have seen similar tracks on previous job sites, as well as telling of odd incidents such as an oil drum weighing 450 pounds having been moved without explanation. Soon began to utilize the term Bigfoot to describe the mysterious culprit. Jerry, who initially believed someone was playing a prank on them, once again observed more of these numerous massive footprints and contacted a reporter. A plaster cast was made of the footprints and Jerry appeared holding one of the casts on the front page of a newspaper on October 6, 1958. With multiple people experiencing the same thing, it makes me question how it could not not be real. Number 9. One of the earliest sightings in Florida In 1975 in Florida, Collier County, a family found some Bigfoot footprints. A family went hunting out on a boys trip and the man retelling the story was 13 years old at the time. He said, My family drove out to a secluded area of the Everglades, way out in the middle of nowhere. We tracked through waist high vegetation growth and when we reached a clearing and continued in a horizontal line towards a tree line approximately 100 yards away. We supposedly were hunting for rabbits but never saw one. As we approached the tree line, we came upon a recently dried out water hole. Here is where I spotted the tracks. They were at least 17 inches in length, two half prints and one full print in the mud going into the brush line. The brush on the other side was thrashed. I recall that we left the area not longer after it and it basically ended our trip. I feel like with what I know now, it was a skunk ape. I swear on the bible on this experience. I clearly remember no sign of animal activity to include land or air. No birds. Weird for 7pm aka dusk in the Everglades. Six of us saw it but at the time none of us said anything. I remember it was 1975, only 8 years after the Patterson film. Number 8. California State In the United States, California is the state with the most reported Bigfoot sightings. So far there have been 461 reported sightings. This is a real story from January 2022. A family was hiking in Humboldt County on a local trail in Redcrest. They hike this trail for 19 years and do it three to four times a week, and they always go as a family. Their story goes: in the summer, we hike the trail nearly every day. We've never ever gotten the creeps in those woods. The last two hikes have really changed that. We were nearly done. On our way out, when a loud, and I'm talking loud, yell, scream, guttural screech echoed through the woods. My family and I have grown up in redwoods. We've heard everything that nature has to offer in the way of animal sounds, but it wasn't a raven, a fox, a bear, a lion, a deer bleat, a chipmunk, or a hawk. It sounded somewhat like a human, but the fact that it traveled through the woods so clearly and loud really shook all of us. Today, the sound was nothing we've ever heard before. It was loud and defined. It was just far enough in the distance for whatever it was to get its point across without making us petrified. It stopped my mother, me, and my son in our tracks. There was no doubt that we all heard the same thing. We got the feeling that we were being watched and that feeling didn't go away until we started driving off. Number 7. Bigfoot Body Two men, Matt Witten and Rick Dyer, claimed to have stumbled across a Bigfoot corpse in the woods northern of Georgia, and they stood by their story at a news conference in Palo Alto during which they offered an email from an entomologist as evidence and said they have kept the body in a freezer for more than a month. Everyone who was talked down to us is going to eat their words, said Matt, an officer on medical leave from the Clayton County Police Department. Matt and Rick, a former corrections officer, announced the discovery on YouTube and their website. Although they didn't consider themselves devoted Bigfoot trackers before then, they have since started offering weekend search expeditions in Georgia for $499. The specimen they bagged, the men say, was one of several ape-like creatures they spotted cavorting the woods. Was it real or just a cash grab? 
lab, who knows, but finding the body of Bigfoot, wow. <laughs> Number six, the footprint. In Logan, Utah, Matthew Wentz came across a large footprint he thinks could have been made by a Sasquatch in the Bear River Range. He didn't see the creature, only found the print, but he took a photo of it. Matthew, who is six foot three, explained that a mountain lion track is not much bigger than his palm. The black bear tracks he has seen are not any bigger than his hand, so that eliminates some comments of people saying it was possibly from a bear. He said, I wear size 12 shoe, and in comparison to that, there is no no bear that would make a print that big. I've looked up bear tracks and even the largest grizzly bear, this track is bigger. That track is in the 15 to 16 inch range, which is pretty big. If you take a shoe size, it would be bigger than a size 20. The width was six to seven inches. I really believe there is some tall being out there, but I have no idea what it is. It's hard to believe they would be around here because there are so many people and more going into the mountains these days compared to 30 or 40 years ago. People used to see stuff all the time. He also said, I have multiple friends that are older than me that have seen stuff around here. They're credible, but they don't talk about it. You know, when someone has seen something and it scares them, they don't really want to talk about it or be ridiculed. Number five, hitchhiking. To this day, there are still sightings in Florida, and in 2021, as a commuter was driving down US 1, they were driving south just after sunset, and there was one on the road beside him and another truck. While driving, he noticed something very large walking on the west side of US 1, walking north, approaching him. His best description of what he saw was a huge football player in shoulder padding, six to seven feet tall, wearing a long, shaggy fur coat. This happened in the summertime in Florida, so no human would dare wear one, it would be too hot. He said, I slowed down as I became level with what I saw and it had the head of an ape with a bump on its head. The fur was long and looked white, kind of like a dirty white shag carpet. As he drove past, the beast did not turn to look at him but kept looking straight ahead. It was out in the open and he thinks the other truck saw it too due to their driving actions, but that is just insane. Number four, the professor. Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum is a professor of autonomy and anthropology. He teaches at Idaho State University and his lab houses over 300 footprint casts from a mysterious North American primate. He said, historical evidence for the existence of Bigfoot takes the form of Native American accounts of a wild man in the woods. Depictions are remarkably similar across tribes considering the differing regional circumstances and interpretations. As European settlers pressed westward into the wilderness, they too reported encounters with wild men, buggers, giant hairy apes, mountain devils, etc. As a student of human bipedalism, our adaptions for walking on two feet, the best contemporary evidence are footprints that corroborate these stories of wild men. Something is leaving oversized human-like footprints. They are either hoaxed, misidentified, or the trace of a real species. The distinctive anatomy, documented consistently over the past 70 years, is compelling evidence of the latter. Number three, indigenous cultures. Many of the indigenous cultures across North America can contact include tales of mysterious hair covered creatures living in forests and legends that existed long before contemporary reports of Bigfoot. On the Tool River Indian Reservation in Central California, they believe in a group of Bigfoot called the Family. They called the largest of them hairy men and they are estimated to be between 500 and 1000 years old. Other tribes tell stories about Saskets, a shape shifting creature that protects the forest. The name Sasquatch is the anglized version of Saskets, roughly translating to hairy man. Other tales from different tribes describe them as a nocturnal race and children were warned against saying the name so the monsters would not come and carry them off in the night. In 1847, natives talked about skookums, a race of human eating wild men living on the peak of Mount St. Helens in southern Washington state. Also related to this area was an alleged incident in 1924 in which a violent encounter between a group of gold prospectors and a group of ape men occurred. Heard. These allegations were reported in July 16th, 1924. This has become a popular piece of Bigfoot lore with the area now being referred to as Ape Canyon. Number 
two, the Reddit Bigfoot Hunter. One Reddit user posted on the Ask Me Anything subreddit. They claim to have had countless interactions with Bigfoot and have done a lot of research. They list important things being number one, the most common misconception about Bigfoot is that there's only one of them. I and a vast majority of Bigfoot enthusiasts believe there exists self perpetuating species of the bipedal ape residing in North America. Cousin species are likely the abominable snowman, yeti, and yowie, among others. Number two, as recently as 300,000 years ago, there exists skeletal evidence of a species of a massive ape called Gigantopithecus black. <laughs> Gigantopithecus. A massive ape called Gigantopithecus blackie. Many Bigfoot enthusiasts believe these are ancestors of modern big feet. Number three, there is an average of 400 reported sightings each year. Based on these reports, big feet can be characterized as follows. Walk upright, up to eight feet tall, covered in black, brown, red fur all over their bodies, except for the face, palms, and soles, secrete a foul smell, nocturnal behavior, omnivorous diet, marked intelligence and senses of smell, vision, and hearing, extremely cautious behavior around humans. The most numerous examples of physical evidence are footprint casings. The Stride length heel to heel between prints is usually four to five feet, and the depth of the prints denotes the specimen weighing 600 to 700 pounds. Number one. The President Believed US President Theodore Roosevelt, in his 1893 book, The Wilderness Hunter, writes a story he was told by an elderly mountain man named Bowman, in which a foul-smelling, bipedal creature ransacked his beaver trapping camp, stalked him, and later became hostile when it fatally broke his companion's neck in the wilderness near the Idaho-Montana border. Roosevelt notes that Bowman appeared fearful while telling the story, but attributed the trapper's folkloric German ancestry to have potentially influenced him, but it seems like he believed him. A president believing in something like this? That's unheard of. It has to be true then. Number 10. How they live. In Washington state, a team of amateur Bigfoot researchers called the Olympic Project claimed to have discovered a collection of nests which belonged to Bigfoot. They had primatologists study them, with the conclusion being that they appear to have been created by a primate. There have been structures of broken and twisted foliage seemingly placed in specific areas, which have been attributed by some to Bigfoot behavior. In some reports, lodgepole pine and other small trees have been observed bent, uprooted, or stacked in patterns such as weaved and crisscrossed, leading to some to theorize that they are potential territorial markings. Some instances have included entire deer skeletons being suspended in high trees. Some Bigfoot researchers allege that Bigfoot throws rocks as territorial displays, in for communication, and audible blows struck against trees or wood knocking. Number nine, where the species came from. Primatologist John R. Napier and anthropologist Gordon Strensenberg have suggested a species of Paranthropus as a possible candidate for the Bigfoot's identity, such as Paranthropus robotus with its gorilla-like crest skull and bipedal gait. Paranthropus is characterized by robust skulls with a prominent gorilla-like sagittal crest among the middle line, which suggests strong chewing muscles and broad herbivorous teeth used for grinding. Now, it's great that they believe this, but fossils of Paranthropius are found only in Africa, so it wouldn't really explain Bigfoot being in North America, but maybe it's something similar. Number eight, research. Doing scientific research, Steve Moon, who has three MFAs and a master's in anthropology, has studied Bigfoot for the past 10 years, and he claims to have had at least 12 sightings. If you want credibility to build these theories, if you want to test, you want to actually discover things things, then you've got to follow that method," he said. His ultimate goal is to prove Bigfoot's existence so the species may be appreciated and preserved. We all know that he exists, but now we need to find a way for science to accept the data," he said. While on a trail in the forest, Steve mimicked a Bigfoot's howl and he could hear a response. It was recorded and the recorder picked up a faint animal-like sound after his howl. Though it is almost inaudible, there is something there. Steve said, I may have gotten a response. It's two seconds after my call ends. It's descending, followed by a percussive ascending note. 
If I were going to interpret this possible response, it sounds like a Sasquatch was offended by my call. Number seven. It's not just one species. Now, all around the world, people tell of mysterious beasts that are part human, part ape, typically large, hairy creatures that walk on two legs, but always seem to stay just out of sight. There isn't just a Bigfoot in North America, but there are other beasts as well. A yaoi is found in Australia, particularly in the eastern part of the continent. There have been over 3,000 distinct yaoi sightings that have been reported in the Blue Mountain area of west of Sydney. There's the Yeti, which is located in the Himalayas, which is also called the Abominable Snowman. The Orang Penic is located in central Sumatra, Indonesia. Orang Penic means a short person in Indonesian, which makes sense because it has a short stature and a human-like face. Local folklore says that these creatures walk with back pointing feet to confuse anyone trying to track them. And finally, a Kimozit is located in east central Kenyan forests. Some witnesses say that the Kimozit looks like a hyena or bear and call it a Nandi bear after the Kenyan tribe that lives in its reported range. The Nandi people, however, consider the creature to be an enormous, ferocious primate that enjoys eating the brains of its victims. If there are so many creatures like this around the world, they have to exist then. Right? Number six, the theory. There have been many studies surrounding Bigfoot, and one study was conducted by John Napier and published in his book Bigfoot, the Yeti, and Sasquatch in Myth and Reality in 1973. John wrote that if a conclusion is to be reached based on scant, exantant, hard evidence, science must declare Bigfoot does not exist. However, he found it difficult to entirely reject thousands of alleged tracks scattered over 125,000 square miles or to dismiss all the many hundreds of eyewitnesses' accounts. John concluded, I'm convinced that Sasquatch exists, but whether it is all it's cracked up to be is another matter altogether. There must be something in the Northwest America that needs explaining, and that something leaves man-like footprints. Number five, recently spotted in Pennsylvania. The Bigfoot Field Organization, aka Beefro, has their own website filled with hundreds of stories of people spotting Bigfoot. On the website, a story was posted by a user saying, on October 5th, 2022, while my boyfriend and I were biking on the ghost town trails near Ambensburg, Pennsylvania, we saw a Bigfoot coming about 150 yards in front of us. He was walking along the trail towards us. We couldn't see his face, but when he saw us, he turned around quickly and walked into the woods. As we went by, we looked into the woods and didn't see anything. It was really shocking as there were no sounds or smells. As he was walking, you could see how big his stride was and there was a huge space between his legs. We thought this was a once in a lifetime thing and thought it was so cool. Yes, Bigfoot does exist. And just in case you think the beef road just took a submitted report, the site reported that it did a follow up and spoke with the witnesses. It even names them on the site and they found their testimony to be credible. The investigator who put it all together, Matthew Moneymaker, who was mentioned in part one of the series. If you haven't seen part one and part two, check them out. Number four. Four, three photos of Bigfoot. A keen hunter once claimed to encounter Bigfoot and unveiled shocking photo proof to the world after setting up cameras outside his house. Craig Salk really loved hunting with his wife, and to increase the odds of their hunting success, Craig set up a number of trail cameras on his land. In 2012, one of his cameras snapped a mysterious figure that didn't appear to be animal or human. Luckily, Craig was a big fan of the show Finding Bigfoot on Animal Planet, and he knew exactly what he had to do. He reached out to the TV channel and showed the producers the image captured on his cameras. Animal Planet was massively impressed by the fact that Craig had managed to get three snaps of the mysterious creature and filmed an episode with him. After the episode aired, Craig was suddenly a star and he was flooded with phone calls and visits from Americans who wanted to share their own bizarre paranormal experiences. Craig and his wife soon opened their land to the world to let anyone come out and examine the spot where Bigfoot was seen, take a look at the pictures, and judge for themselves. Number three, first sighting ever. David Thompson was a surveyor and trader who worked for the Hudson's Bay Company and the Northwest Company. He was considered one of North America's great pathfinders and surveyors as he traveled through Western North America between 1785 and 1812. Once he saw Bigfoot and wrote in his journal of his finding while in Alberta, Canada. He wrote, January 7th, 1811, continuing on our journey in the afternoon, we came on the track of a large animal, the snow about six inches deep on the ice. 
I measured it. Four large toes, each four inches in length, to each a short claw. The ball of the foot sunk three inches lower than the toes. The hinder part of the foot didn't mark well. The length 14 inches by eight inches in breadth, walking from north to south, and having passed about six hours. As the snow was about six inches in depth, the track was well defined, and we could see it for a full 100 yards from us. This animal was proceeding north to south. We did not attempt to follow it, we had no time for it, and the hunters, eager as they are to follow and shoot every animal, made no attempt to follow this beast for what could the balls of our fouling guns do against such an animal. Number 2. The Battle of Ape Canyon The most successful launching pad for the public's obsession with Bigfoot is a battle that supposedly took place in a narrow gorge on the east flank of Mount St. Helens. The gorge is now called Ape Canyon. That's where, in the summer of 1924, a group of gold prospectors stumbled out of the woods shaking and glassy-eyed to tell of a seven-foot-tall ape-like animals attacking them with boulders. Fred Beck and four others described coming upon gorilla men near where they had built a small cabin. They saw four of the giant animals moving through the forest with erect, human-like strides. They were covered with long black hair, their ears were about four inches long, and stuck straight up. They had four toes, short and stubby. The witnesses estimated each animal weighed around 400 pounds. Taken aback at the sight of the huge beasts, Fred fired his rifle at one of the creatures and struck three times, resulting in the wounded animal toppling off a cliff. This would be a mistake though, as that night the men were awakened when huge stones began hitting against their cabin. Then they heard and felt giant bodies slamming against the walls and door. The eight men were seeking revenge and eventually tore a hole in the roof, allowing them to target Fred. Many of the rocks fell through the hole in the roof and two of the rocks struck Fred, one of them rendering him unconscious for nearly two hours. Then when the sun began to come up, the animals broke off their attack and slipped away. The men then poked their heads out the door and when they decided the coast was clear, they ran out of the woods. And coming in at number one, Bigfoot kidnapping. In 1924, Albert Ostman, a lumberjack and woodsman, went on vacation in the woods. Albert had heard stories about the man beast who supposedly roamed these woods but refused to believe them. Then everything changed. One night when he was asleep, a Sasquatch picked him up and carried him off while he was in his sleeping bag. He was carried in a sleeping bag across the country for three hours by the Sasquatch. The Sasquatch then dropped Albert down on a plateau and standing around him was a family of four of the creatures, two adults and two children. Albert claims he was kept captive by them for six months. Days. One of the Bigfoots was reported as being 8 feet tall. Now, Albert had a gun, but he decided not to use it as they had done him no harm. He stayed with the Bigfoot family, stating he ate sweet tasting grass that they gave him, and the female Sasquatch washed and stacked leaves. He escaped by making the large male Sasquatch groggy by feeding him some snuff. Albert did not tell his story for more than 24 years after it happened in fear of being thought of as crazy. But as more Sasquatch stories appeared in the press, Albert decided to tell his story. Number 10. Strange Sounds A Bigfoot sighting became a federal investigation when a man fired his weapon inside a national park in Kentucky. Brad Ginn told news outlets he and his girlfriend were camping nearby and were awakened at about 1am by a man with his son. We got out of the tent and saw a man who told us their campsite had been destroyed by someone or something. The man who was with his young son showed them his weapon on his hip and told him the area was popular for Bigfoot sightings. The couple climbed back into their tent as the man walked away to investigate with his son in tow. We heard them coming back about 10 minutes later. We heard them yelling, I see it! Brad said. We saw a flash from his weapon, and he shot maybe 20 yards from the side of our tent into the pitch black darkness. After this, Brad and his girlfriend decided to leave and report the incident, which was the smart thing to do. A park spokeswoman, Molly Schwar, said there was an investigation and that the park was safe to visit. The statement did not confirm a Bigfoot sighting, but Molly said that no threat remains in the park. Federal regulations prohibit the discharge of a firearm in the national park, and park officials know the identity 
of the person who allegedly fired the weapon, but no charges had been filed. Number 9. Thrown Logs In 2015, a pair of Bigfoot hunters were hot on the trail of a Bigfoot outside Houston, Texas. While following the beast, they realized the creature was unhappy with their presence. As they began their overnight hunt, the lead investigator realized that something was throwing full-size logs at them from the tree line. That's according to Wes Germer, host of the Sasquatch Chronicle podcast, whose team ventured into the East Texas Piney Woods. In the early night, the noise came. We heard this thing crash through the bush, and then we heard this thing start crashing, just crash, 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 and you can hear it walking, and you can hear it breaking branches as it's going. Then the giant bolted off and plowed fiercely through the dense brush with astonishing speed. This thing moved so fast, it probably covered 100, 150 yards like nothing. As we neared the spot where we heard the beast lurking, a noise grew and I knew what it was. It was a log coming, and it was a big log, and you could hear it being thrown. And I ducked down, because I thought for sure it was going to hit us, but it hit the tree right in front of us, and I just couldn't believe what was happening. Wes says it was a warning, and that it wasn't the only time Sasquatch has thrown logs at unwelcomed intruders. Number 8 New Footprint In March 2022 in Big Sur, California, a hiker spotted a very large footprint. They took a picture of it next to their own foot for perspective and shared it on Reddit's Bigfoot page, where commenters discussed if they felt the print belonged to a Sasquatch or if it was nothing. And there were plenty of believers. One person wrote, This is the first imprint I have seen that isn't clearly a bear. Good find. While another stated, I wish the print was more fresh, but it really does look more like a Bigfoot track, and a third chimed in, what a solid print. Someone else added, definitely Sasquatch, the upper foot impressions is relative to the lower width and diameter of depth. I'd reach out to the Loco Bresto Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization in your area ASAP. Now it honestly does look huge, and to me, you can even see the toe prints, seems pretty convincing to me. <laughs> Number 7. Bigfoot Eats Hogs East Texas is the home to many reported sightings of Bigfoot, including one particular encounter from a hunter in Panola County. The witness claims that while he was hog hunting, he watched a Sasquatch leap out of the woods and grabbed one of the hogs. The report states that the Bigfoot began making a loud whooping noises, which were met with more howls from somewhere off in the distance. Before walking back into the woods, the creature stared directly at the hunter and growled. Seemed like the hunter got a little too close to Bigfoot territory. Now those whooping sounds would definitely creep me out, especially if there were more coming from the forest. Ugh. Number 6. Face to Face One of the three Midland County Bigfoot encounters documented details of a witness discovering an ape-like creature on the first day of hunting season in 1997. The witness claims to have seen the legendary creature on November 15, 1997 while driving in a wooded area near Coleman on Coleman Road, about 6 miles north of M20. They said, I was driving north around 645 and saw a creature coming out of the ditch. The report describes the creature as having a flat, ape-like face and hair on its arms and head. The witness claims to have come within 10 feet of the creature when it looked at the witness. As the witness got closer to the beast, it made eye contact with him before disappearing into the trees, and that is terrifying. Number 5. Bigfoot Likes Children This user tells a story of seeing Bigfoot as a child. They said, I've had two separate sightings here in central Alabama, once when I was about 5 and another when I was 19. The first one, I was at my Nana's house playing outside in a tree house my dad and pa built for me and I looked off into the woods and saw a large light brown bipedal creature standing there watching me. So I ran inside to get my Nana and when we came back out to the tree house, it was gone. The second time, me and my wife were coming back from a buddy's house real late at night, and I saw something large cross on two legs in front of a yellow road sign up ahead. These signs were about 10 feet tall, and this thing covered the whole sign when I walked in front of it. Now, many people believe that Bigfoot likes children. While many don't think they actually eat children, they think they might try to kidnap them to keep as pets, as they like to watch kids for the same reason people like to watch kittens or puppies playing, and there's a similar urge to take one home with them. Number 4. Falling Bigfoot 
Bigfoot has been reportedly spotted in Colorado more than a hundred times in recent years, including one notable daylight spotting that occurred in Summit County, Colorado. In the summer of 2019, a daytime hiker was taking a break near an old log cabin in the area of Mayflower Gulch near Frisco when he spotted something strange at about 11,000 feet of elevation. He reported seeing a large bipedal creature attempting and failing to climb a 20 foot high snow wall. After the failed attempt at scaling the barrier, the creature moved on and out of sight. The hiker was joined by two others and they searched the area. During this search, the group was able to locate prints in the snow, including large handprints and footprints. That being said, they were unable to again locate the actual creature. The report prompted Bigfoot Field Research Organization investigator Scott Miles to further look into the report. Scott decided to meet up with the witness at the site of the spotting. At the scene, the witness was able to recount the sighting in a manner consistent with the initial report, pointing out exact landmarks involved in his story. After deeper analysis of the witness's account, Scott said, I believe that the witness saw exactly what he reported and was witness to a Sasquatch, probably a young individual that accidentally or naively got caught in a compromising situation in the daytime in a fairly high traffic area. Number three. In the swamp. In 2015, two men canoeing in Tampa, Florida swamp were expecting to see an alligator when they heard rustling on the bank. They soon realized that the creature they were watching was no alligator. One of the men said, initially it was exciting, it was like, oh, is that a bear? That's pretty cool. But when we moved closer, it started to look less and less like a bear. In that moment, I was looking at it and getting a little bit freaked out, especially once it started really moving. You could tell that he was slapping the water and it looked like maybe he was grabbing something. At the time, I was thinking, holy what the hell is this? By the time it walked off, my buddy was just like, let's go, let's go now. The friend moved one of the canoe paddles making a noise, which seemed to catch the attention of the hairy individual in the swamp. I don't know if it was a coincidence that it started moving because of the noise, but it seemed to know that we were there. He said his friend was so shaken by the experience that he won't talk about it. Number two his face. This user describes what they saw when they came face to face with Bigfoot. They saw the beast in early spring 1994 or 95 in Salt Fork State Park in Ohio, Hazak's Cave. I hope I said that right. <laughs> he said, the one I saw had black sclera, the white part of her eyes, and cheek pads like a male orangutan. It was not a man in a suit. It threw rocks at me as I hiked a path towards a small waterfall and I was a little confused but oblivious. The last rock was bigger and hit me in the calf and hurt. I spun around quickly towards the direction it came from yelling, that really hurt, thinking it was somebody messing with me, and saw a head from the eyes looking up over a fallen tree tree or ridge maybe 15 feet away. It looked like an orangutan wearing a ghillie suit. I looked in the eyes for maybe 5 seconds trying to comprehend what I was looking at. Golden brown eyes with black sclera and cheek pads like a male orangutan. It didn't look malicious really, had more of an okay, you got the point look. It casually turned its eyes away and ducked back behind the tree or ridge. Then I realized what I saw and got back to my car. All I could think was that because of his cheek pads, he was the dominant male of the troop. They must have been at the water source that I was hiking towards and he was keeping me from getting closer. I was maybe three quarters of the way there but the smaller rock started at about the halfway point and got gradually bigger until I caught on. I told my brother and best friend and they didn't believe me so I dropped or suppressed it for 20 years. I didn't think of it again until I saw a Bigfoot toy and thought they got the face wrong. And coming in at number one is the traffic cam sighting. A Washington Department of Transportation traffic cam camera near Sherman Pass captured Bigfoot standing in the snow in January 2020. At least one person at the Washington State Department of Transportation seems to think they saw Bigfoot after tweeting out some puzzling images captured by one of the department's webcams. Sasquatch spotted, the department East Twitter account tweeted, along with three circled and zoomed in photos. I'm not superstitious, just a little stitious. The employee points out that there appears to be something in the bottom left part of the frame. It looks like a person shaped figure silhouetted against an evergreen tree. Might be Sasquatch, we will leave that up to you, the tweet said. The tweet also says that the photos were captured on State Road 20 Sherman Pass, a route that winds its way through the forested Cascade Mountains in the northeastern part of the state. The spot is about 70 kilometers south of the Canada-US border in Grand Forks, BC. Honestly, I think it could be Bigfoot. It looks convincing. <laughs> 